Hi, this is Natalie Lander, voice of Kinsey, Tara Branford, Stargirl, and many others. You are listening to a W2M Net podcast. You can visit W2Mnet.com for other podcasts about entertainment, video games, sports, and wrestling. You are listening to Video Games to the Max. Hello and welcome to another edition of Video Games to the Max. This is episode 219. And I am your host, Sean Garman. Here with me, of course, is Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. And, of course, this is the Video Games, official Video Games podcast, W2Net.com. And, well, we are another week has happened and man uh, we're a day away well it's already out in some places but we're a day away from resident evil 3 remake the reviews are already out there it seems pretty mixed either you're really loving it or you're not <laughs> uh, i mean most of the reviews i've seen are pretty positive <laughs> yeah i see the people complaining a lot about it being too short well i mean resident evil 3 is a short game so yeah yeah i mean i think it was game spot that like didn't seem to like it very much. Eh. Uh, thought it was like criminal to the original or something. Yeah, they gave it uh, a six. Which yeah. is fairly low compared to other people. But so yeah, most a lot of other people gave it a gave it a higher score. So yeah, it's it's uh, gonna be a fun couple of weeks. Final Fantasy Seven is already out in Europe and Australia. <laughs> If you bought the physical version, and people were uh, streaming the uh, the game, and then it didn't take long for Square to pretty much put uh, the kibosh on all that. I think I, mean, I woke yeah, up I mean... this morning, and there was stuff there, and then I think I checked at 5 o'clock, and all it was gone. <laughs> yeah, because it's a... I mean, it's not officially releasing over there, so... Yeah, but Twitch shouldn't have been letting people stream anyway. Yeah, but, I mean, you can enter in anything onto Twitch, and then, you know, you can say you're playing you can say you're playing a Final Fantasy VIII remake. I mean, they don't they don't show what the game is. You can enter right. that detailed thing for, for yourself. Yeah, the, the uh, funny thing was uh, there was one, I think, that I saw that was an April Fool's joke, and they were just playing some Japanese movie instead. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. They, um, they, they were pl- they were playing Advent Children in the movie, and everyone was wondering why it looked like shit. Uh, yeah, it's uh, gonna be it's gonna be fun this whole week. See, I'm sure there's gonna be everybody trying to test that until they get tired of it. How long they can get it to last? Um, I forgot who the I forgot his name. I think it's Jared. He has a weird. It starts with a K, uh, his last name starts with a K. He had an awesome April Fools, uh, that said it was the remake review, and then it's like a hack of like a Super Nintendo version of like I think it's Final Fantasy like one or two. That yeah. has like a Super Nintendo version of Cloud. <laughs> so, um, that was uh, pretty interesting to to go through, and all the people that are getting upset. I wonder. If there'll be any pressure at some point to have Square just unlock it digitally early, or they he they actually stick I to making it. everybody wait, uh, they'll stick to everyone making everyone wait. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, only one week away. Resident Evil's there tomorrow. Uh, Persona Five: The Royal is already out, and it took a little bit, but you finally yeah, got it. Yeah, my copy got delayed by a day. I've seen other people have it delayed like one or two days extra. Yeah, I think, you know, Yen's got his, I think, well, the day of. And then the first thing he did is start complaining about the soundtrack. <laughs> Why? It's not like the full soundtrack. Uh, it's like this, like, 38-minute, like, sampler soundtrack. Oh, Because, well. like, the, the Japanese version has, like, some two-CD soundtrack. But it's like, first of all, if you thought you are going to get the official soundtrack of the game, you're nuts. Because, like, the soundtrack, even for, like, base Persona 5, was, like, three CDs. Yeah. 
uh, second that of all, by itself is like a hundred dollars or whatever, right? Yeah. Second of all, I mean, the, the second he found this out, he ran to eBay Japan, I think, and bought like the Japanese soundtrack. Uh, okay. <laughs> like second of all, like he was like lamenting that like you know Japan special editions are like way cooler. And I'm, I was like, That's yeah. That's usually the case. <laughs> because they're made for Japan, and they're made by J- Japanese game developers. Like, and they don't have to ship it over here, and they don't have to translate things. And they... I Well, mean... like, I mean, like, the Catherine Special Edition over there got, like, a four-CD soundtrack. I'm like, so do you have that? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, then why are you, you know, why complain about this one? <laughs> and also, like, American games get special editions for America. You know, I would... I mean, I was like, do you think, like, Saints Row 4 or, like, Doom has special editions in Japan? Probably not. <laughs> and his retort was, well, I don't care about those games. And I'm like, well, some people over here do, so... <laughs> but, yeah, Final Five's okay. I played, like, three hours of it. I think the special edition's nice. I'm actually surprised at how nice that mask is inside of it. Oh, really? Uh, is it uh, the Joker mask, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's like not... I was anticipating some like McDonald's quality, you know, toy quality plastic or something. But this feels like like almost like a, like ceramic or something. Like, it's pretty heavy duty. Or, you know, it feels good. And like fairly non-breakable, which is nice. Uh, yeah, it has like a small sampler soundtrack. Uh, a theme, which I don't really like. And an art book, which is okay. Hey, why didn't you like the theme? Uh, it's just... J- Japan has a, a lot... Japan has, like, a theme for every character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can just buy them on the store, and, like, America does not have that. And, like, the Japanese only, like, pre-order theme was, like, white and very cool-looking. And this one is just kind of red, like, the Persona 5 dancing theme. And I'm like, all right... Enough of the red. Like, you can move under a different color now. <laughs> oh, that's what I had until today when I, yeah. uh, I actually, I bought the digital version of 7 Remake and it has the Cloud and Sephiroth theme. Yeah, I'm sure downloads. my, yeah. I'm sure my physical copy will have that in the code or they have it in the box. Oh, I also got like this like weird, I kind of like it actually, this like collector card, uh, in Persona 5, nice. which is nice. And it comes in like a little attractive box, which I like. But yeah, I played three hours of it. Uh, yo, it's more Persona Five. <laughs> well, I've seen yeah. it's getting the the awesome big scores of everything. So, uh, like... it's it's well, okay. So they have changed some things already, like in the battle system, which is kind of nice. So you played you played Persona Five, right? Yes. So remember how like in battles, if you used like. Ammo was pretty scarce. Mm-hmm. It's like you, know, you're like your main gun would have like twelve shots, and it's like, well, uh, the only way you can get more ammo is if you use like one item, which is pretty rare, or if you stop going to the dungeon. You know, you have to like rest for the day, and then the next day you get more ammo. Uh, and this one, ammo regenerates after every battle. So, oh, really? you can oh use yeah, that's a- right. You can use guns a lot more often. <laughs> Yeah, well, from what I was reading, apparently that balances out as you go yeah. through the game. It just kind of makes you ungodly at first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know they fixed, I was looking it up already, I know they fixed the Reaper glitch, or the Reaper exploit, which is unfortunate. Uh, when I started the game, I got a whole ass load of DLC, which is pretty funny. <laughs> like, all the DLC from like, the original game. It's like, here, oh, here are all the Persona 5 uh Persona DLCs, you can just download, or you, you, here, here they are. I'm like, cool. Oh, nice. And like a bunch of like costumes, even though there's like a lot more costumes for sales already. <laughs> uh, I've met the new chick uh, three times so far, but she's not like made a huge impact in the story. Uh, yeah, the intro's a little different because she's in it. But yeah, I'm just doing the first palace right now, the Kamafita Palace. Uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I, I don't like not... I miss having my over character. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure after using it for so long, you have to up, 
level them up again and everything. Well, it's not that. I mean, levels in that game are pretty gated, but I meant like inventory would would uh, roll over to the next game. <laughs> so I had like a you know a strength four hundred sword, and now I'm using in a strength twenty sword. I'm like, nah. <laughs> I miss my cool shit. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, I've been playing... I played this thing... I finally got this thing called Burzoom. Mm. It is a... Uh, so I have an Oculus Quest. And I have an exercise bike. And this thing strap basically is an app for your Oculus Quest and like a little sensor for the bike. And it's an exercise VR like thing. Wow. Nice. So does it like actually, you feel like you're in there? Yeah. It, there, there are two apps. One I haven't tried yet. It's a game suite app, which looks kind of terrible, I think personally, but the other one this one I played was this like, uh, uh Google maps thing where you set down. Like, I, I mean, there are also, there are some set paths, but you can go to different pathing, around the world, or, around, you know, and just pedal down the road. And it updates the, you know, the picture every few seconds, or every second or so. It's not That's 100%. Cool. It, it doesn't look, I mean, it doesn't look, like, that realistic, especially, mm-hmm. I went, like, I did three uh, quick trips, like, two nature, or, like, two are, like, you know, like, national parks or something. They look pretty good. But I did one, which is, like, the Boston Marathon route, and that looked really kind of weird. Because of like the the Google like distortion map distortion, like signs were like really weird looking. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it gave you a pretty good sense of speed down like, pedaling your butt this bike down the road. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, hey, there you go. At least you're keeping fit a little. Yeah, bit. I mean, that's. Uh, I, I, that was the excuse I used. I said to my mom, "I'm like, well, I'm not going to go out really," and then. I, I find it boring just staring at my wall on this exercise bike. So grab me, grab me this thing, and she's like, "All right." <laughs> yeah. I mean... uh, yeah. And more Animal Crossing. <laughs> Have you done the uh, Easter thing yet? Uh, I did a little of it. I found the stupid rabbit, uh, and I found like one or two of his eggs and like one or two of his uh, uh, recipes. Uh, that game, it's weird. Like, it's, I, I, I know Jens really doesn't like it. He was telling me that last night. Uh, I, I'm kind of turning on it a, a tad because I find parts of the interface extremely clunky. Uh-oh. We're starting so, to get there. <laughs> well, it's like, okay, you can find these, like, uh, I think they're called, like, manila clams. And you can mm-hmm. turn those into, pe- you can turn those into fish, uh, fish food. Uh, you know, to spread out in the ocean to get, you know, attract a special fish or something. So you can only make one one at a time. And it's like, I have 15 of these fucking clams. Why can't I just say, make 15? And it do it. <laughs> you know, what, what's the problem with that? Or well, I wish there was like a, uh, your, you know, your tools break after usage. I wish there was like a health bar with that. Like, hey, your hammer, your axe only has 20% health left. It has four more hits. You know, what would be the problem with, you know, telling you that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, there, there is kind of no, like... I mean, I, I know I, I know that, like, Animal Crossing has always had kind of some inventory or, like, UI problems. Mm-hmm. But it's 2020, y'all, and that, that game franchise has been out for... I mean, they've made four or five of them at least. Like... I... I think the personality of the game kind of still shines through. Like some of the some, some of the characters are still pretty endearing, but yeah, that's just me. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, it's still the the thing that's like taken over. Twitter oh yeah, right every, now, it's, every it's every still... Switch friend I have is playing it. Although they they never have their islands open for me to visit. I've only visited. I, I realized a few nights ago. Animal Crossing really is a perfect perfect encapsulation of real life. Because, like, the popular 
anime cosplaying women I have on my friend, Switch friends list, they have tons of people visiting them. Or, meanwhile, I've had two. <laughs> and my <laughs> island has been open like tw- you know, all, almost all the time. I had... Uh, no, I, I've only had Yens visit me. I visited two two islands, Yens and this one cosplayer I fr- friend I have, who's pretty, I mean, she's nice, uh-huh. but, you know, I visited her island, and there was, like, six other people running around, and I was, I realized, like, oh, yeah, she's popular. Right, That's yeah. why she has, you know. It's, uh, it's like anything and else. I, and then, I, you know, I have, like, five or six uh, friends, at any time, I generally have, like, five or six friends on my Switch friends list online playing Animal Crossing. And I'll you know I'll throw up the throw up the notice like hey my island's open, and I can I can put my console down and leave it for an hour, and no one will come. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think also people are still in that phase of doing stuff to their islands too, so not everybody's going to everybody's. I mean sure, islands. but I mean you can still do other stuff at other people's islands. Like I'm still missing certain fruit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, someone come over and bring bring me an orange and a pear. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, me and Yen's continued, shockingly, to play Resident Evil Six. Oh wow, <laughs> that sounds enjoyable. So, did you did you ever play Resident Evil Six? No. Okay, there are four campaigns in the game. There's Chris, Leon. Uh, Jake, uh, the punchy guy, they, those are all three campaign, co-op campaigns. Like you have a partner with that, with all three of them. Mm-hmm. There's a fourth campaign, which is Ada Wong. Originally, it was only a single player campaign. It could, I mean, you could only do it solo. So I was going to play it last night, uh, or yesterday with, to, cause Jens wants to replay that game with some cheats and you have to, you have to complete all campaigns with cheats. But they added an Ada Wong partner, co-op partner. Uh, I was like, all right. This this was like news to him also. I mean, he likes the game, and he didn't even know. So I started playing it, and he plays Ada Wong. I'm playing Agent, this like nameless, faceless guy. And I have <laughs> no I have zero agency in the game whatsoever. It is honestly hysterical. I can't what? open doors. I can't open doors, I can't like buttons. I can't solve puzzles. I just stand there and shoot shit. So you, you can kill enemies, but that's it. Yeah, and I can pick up. I can pick up like ammo and like herbs and shit like that. But that's it. I can't do anything. Wow. Else. And like, so also Ada's campaign. She has a uh, hook shot thing, or, like a grappling hook, and she uses she uses it to get around the environments. Mm-hmm. So when Jens uses it, she will like fly up to this new point, and I'll just like teleport behind her. <laughs> and it's like, uh, all right, I guess that's one way to do it. I yeah, mean, so <laughs> the old the old co op way, you just teleport. Yeah, yeah. But we, I think we did like one. I mean, each campaign also has like five chapters. We did like one and a half. Uh, and it sucked. <laughs> At least because, it's uh, not like you know the old days where if you got too far away from the other person. <laughs> You get stuck. You have to go backwards. Yeah. Well, we did once. Uh, the first level was like a stealth level, and that was not great. And then we also it was the first time we ever desynced from one another. We disconnected. We got like halfway through the first part, first level, and then like he like he kept running into a wall, and I was like, "What's going on?" And then my it just dropped the connection, and I was like, "That's new. Uh... I never had this before." But then we replayed it, and that, that was fine. <laughs> So how is uh Warriors whatever whatever <laughs> One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 Uh yes it is pretty great um I mean you know if uh, you're a big Musu fan this is actually one of the better Musu games out there Um so you know uh, I've only played I think the first two levels of the alabasta arc which is the first arc that they do uh thankfully they don't try to do everything because that game would be way too long they only do it over the main six arcs 
That, that's what Kakarot does. <laughs> yeah, they, they do way... It, it, no, because they, they basically skip, like, at least the first... I want to say at least the first, like, 100 episodes or... So at least, like, 60 or 70. Uh, it's yeah. been so long since I've watched the beginning of... Um, I know it's at least the first 50. I don't know about after that. But either way, they truncate it to where you're playing some important parts, you know, yourself, and then you're watching, you know, uh, it uh, it play out in cutscenes and stuff like that. And a lot of it's in engine, and then some of the other parts are actually, like, really good, like, CG or whatnot. So it's, like, a very well done, like, loving ode to One Piece. So there's that. You know, there is a lot of reuse stuff, though, from... Pirate Wars 3, the, almost the exact same, uh, like, moments and everything except for the graphics look better. <laughs> so, um, they did add the Whole Cake Island arc, so there's that, and then also the, there's a little bit of an extra story with the Land of Wano, which is what where One Piece is right now. So that's kind of neat, but yeah, I mean... I wouldn't say this is the way to play if you want to watch the anime. I, I wouldn't play it this way. But as far as the gameplay goes, it's it's fun. Like, it's mindless. And and getting to play is like these characters are, like, super overpowered. But it works in that way. Like, I'm excited to see what they do with Persona uh, when Scramble comes out uh, to see how that's going to work. Because, you know. Well, I mean, yeah. go down with the demo. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I wish they would have put it in English, but. I mean, uh, you can believe me. You can glean what you need to from that demo. <laughs> I have to make me a Switch account, I guess, a Switch Japanese account. Uh, I found PS4 also. I mean, it's up to you, but. Yeah, but I was probably gonna get it on Switch so I could play it and, you know, move. I was probably gonna get it. I was probably gonna get it on PS4, so it won't, won't look like crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it won't. You know, you never know. I mean, it looks yeah, like okay. Crap. Oh, it's not gonna look as good compared to the PS4 version, but yeah, still. But no, it's it's good. Um, I'll I'll play it more, and then by the time we do the the show on for Monday morning, I'll have played more. Uh, the other game that I've played somewhat is or at least I played the first three levels died and then it makes you have to repeat it again the whole way through so I haven't uh, mustered up enough energy to want to try again is a uh, Panzer Dragoon remake uh, which got announced as part of the direct mini um thank you to um oh my god uh, Forever Entertainment for the for the code and thank you to Bandai Namco for the for the code to One Piece as well so uh, yeah, I mean, so basically the game looks fine. Like it's, it was a Saturn game, so you know it's gonna look okay on the Switch. But, um, you know, I, it looks better, obviously, but still, you can, like, the environments are kind of just very. Oh, here's the sand level, and you just see a bunch of sand and. The whole way through until the en- and the enemies kind of pop in and out and stuff like that and that's fine. I mean, uh, the the thing I hate is the well, it's not a hate. It's the thing you have to do. Is like you have to press the R button to move your the view of the dragon around because it'll have little dots on the screen that tell you, okay, here come the enemies. And then sometimes they come out of like nowhere and you're getting hit and you have no idea where you're getting hit from. By the time you turn around, you've been hit three or four times and you have one life bar to last through the entire game. If you die and you don't get enough credits to earn a continue, you have to repeat the whole thing again. It's only six uh, episodes, but still, that's really annoying. So, uh, Yo. yeah. You want, you want to know the real secret? Panzer Dragoon was never a good game. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, or, just, or I want to try it because I like sa- the other ones. Saga and Orca are passable, but that's about it. 
Yeah, I'll probably give it a few more shots and then review it. I mean, like, I like the shooting and stuff like that. It's And the, like, you know, delay target thing, which yeah. was used to much better effect on in other games. But it's just, uh, yeah, that part kind of soured me. I'm like, well, all right. Well, oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, is that embargo for disaster report? Is that over or is that up or what? Yeah, it was March 31st, so you can talk about it, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll talk about that for a brief second. Uh, that game's weird. Well, so, did you expect not? Uh, <laughs> I was I was hoping or maybe this anticipating more action. Yeah. Like I'm not it's not going to be like <clears throat> Sorry. I didn't think it was going to be like some third person like Gears of War shooter or anything like that. But so far, all I've done is walk through environments, uh, do like simple fetch quests for people, and that's it. Well, that I'm sorry. <laughs> like it's well, I, I mean, I'm also pretty early on, so I'm hoping something oh. happens eventually. Uh, yeah. But like, tremor, like you're in a bus that's going to like some, traveling through some city, an earthquake hits, and then you know. I was anticipating like some, uh, like super battle for survival or something like that, and that's not it at all. It's like the most languid disaster ever. Like occasionally tremors hit the, like hit the area you're in, but all you do is like duck and then you like mitigate the damage or you don't take any damage because you only da- you, you get damage by like falling backward or like you know being clumsy. Oh really? You get you have health. I think you have uh, you have health, thirst, and like bathroom need, but it's barely coming to play. Uh, right now, I mean, I'm early on. I'm chasing down. I may, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I'm chasing down some like IT president who his company is like under attack by some other IT company, and I'm thinking like. Is this is this what I should be doing during a disaster? Like, is it, like who cares? Like, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's gonna be some video gaming parts of the video game well, about disaster. One of the fun, one of the funnier parts is like the, one of the first areas you stumble into is like a convenience store, and yet, like, you have to go to the bat like. I thought I had to go to the bathroom. Like I said, like I have a very small need, and there was a guy in the bathroom who ran out of toilet paper, so I had to find him some. And that was funny. <laughs> but uh, also, like you form like friendships with people, or like you like relationships. Like I helped out this like uh, high school teacher, like find her students, and then like we went from like one area to another, and then I just left her and her students. Like, I, I hope she comes back, but it just felt, like, super abrupt. And I was like, what what am I supposed to be doing here? I had to finally like, look up a guide, some Japanese, like, YouTube guide. Because the game doesn't really tell you, like, directly where to go. But it's like, these pa- like, every every place I've been to has been, like, a four-way intersection with three paths blocked off. And I'm like, gee, I wonder where I have to go now. <laughs> uh... Also, like, one, I had to rescue this woman from a, like, falling building, mm. and she glitched out pretty bad. Oh. Uh. Like, th- I mean, thankfully, it didn't affect it, but, like, I'm, I was supposed to, like, lead her down, I think, like, two paths of stairs, and then we were going to hit the ground floor and, like, you know, crawl to, like, the actual, like, ground. And on the first stairwell, she kept glitching on, like, going down the stairs, like, she wouldn't make it down the stairs, and I was like, do I, do I just leave her? Or, I mean, and then I eventually <laughs> did, and then, like, another, like, a tremor hit, and the bat, like, the building shook a little, and then, like, she instantly spawned behind me, and I'm like, good, like, I'm not gonna wait around for her to, like, AI fumble her way down these stairs. I kept trying to, like, push her, but you just, like, clip through people. You could have pushed like, her? No, I couldn't. I was trying oh, to, okay. but then you just, like, clip through people. I was like, great. Uh, so yeah, it's weird. I'm going to keep playing it for a little while longer. Uh, yeah, I just wish, like, I don't need to be like, you know, like, let, like, uh, Last of Us or, you know, some 
violent, you know, dying light. So yeah, dying, mm-hmm. like, so, well, some like like uh, Survivor Simulator or something like that. But I, I want there to be something like you know, level up your fighting, or like you know, you found one gun with eight shots in it or something, or you know, you found a you know, found like a like a decorative like samurai sword, but it's just like nothing so far. And it's like, am, am I just supposed to go through like environment through environment, like stumbling upon stumbling upon these uh like action cues or like you know cues to get this movie move the story forward and that's it? <laughs> I I guess so. Yeah, I guess it's more about the story than it is. Uh, well, if that's the case, yeah. if that was the case, the Taurus should be better. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. It, sometimes that's the thing about uh, certain games. You. I don't... mean, it, it is. It is more to me. It's more akin to a visual novel than an actual game. Although, the last thing I did was pretty funny. I was on this street that looked pretty nice. It like wasn't too screwed up. And I was walking along it, and I felt a tremor. And there, there was a street, and then above me was like a freeway uh, overpass. So I immediately ducked because that's how you, you know, don't take damage. And the freeway overpass collided into me and killed me instantly. And I was like, "Holy crap! Yeah, that's cool." <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, the the reviews are not kind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. I mean, it's 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 a shame because like it's such it's an interesting premise, especially like now. Mm-hmm. But you know, if only it would be given to like a competent developer or you know someone who you know it make it doesn't make it look like a PS2 game. Like this would be nice. Well, technically, it did come out for the PS3. Yeah, doesn't. Pro- I mean, yeah, <laughs> but P- I mean. This I would say like this game looks like worse than like you know a PS3, you know some of those other games. Yeah, it. Well, I I played the le- demo a little bit. I was like, well, I hope you said he this... wanted this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I hope this winds up better than what this is because, uh, you know. Again, again, hey. it, it it's still a great idea, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's like hints in there, I guess, if it would have been better conceived. Yeah. Right? Yep. So, sometimes that's that's the thing. is Very much like uh, Anthem last year, there was a lot of seeds in there, but it just didn't turn out to be... Yeah, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at some other review, or just an excerpt of a review, and it said... Uh, Disaster Report 4 is at best one of the worst visual novel- novels I've ever played. And I was Holy like, yep. Crap. I mean, yeah. Wow. There are, there's like elements of gameplay, but it's not really. <laughs> yeah, that... Yeah, that's that's not an endearing uh, endorsement there at all. That's... Yeah. Also, I mean, also like... You have to find like the right person to actually talk to to get the start, like to get like the, the scene moving. And it's like generally you just find the person that looks like the most detailed or like has the most ornate outfit or like you know the most detailed. That's one. That's a very visual novel thing. Yeah, but I just yeah. you know when you got dozens of people walking around this area or just standing around. It's like okay, this is kind of boring now. Or... Well, we have talked about the games we're playing for a lot more than I thought we were going to. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so we'll get into. I've also been playing uh, Airfell, but I've barely played any of that. It's an RPG um, by a small indie developer. Um, so I'll uh, play a lot more of that, and uh, probably get to talk about it more on on the Sunday night show. Uh, so yeah, let's let's uh, start off with the news because there's some. Uh, big things, and then some other things that uh, were not expected. I already mentioned that Final Fantasy VII Remake, physical copies are out there. Um, and, and so are Resident Evil, and, and Persona 5 also had theirs go out a little early as well. So that's been the case for a lot of things with this uh, COVID-19 going going on right now. Um, 
So, so one of the stories that uh, came out, considering it, where it comes from, it's not surprising per se, um, because Randy Pritchford has not had the best of histories with anything that has to do with paying or or humanity, or, or just general. being a human in general. Yeah. But I think this also isn't necessarily his fault it comes down to the deal that was signed with 2k but yes uh once again uh gearbox is in the news for not not great things and this one has to do with they don't pay employees very well so employees make a bulk of their money based off of bonuses with 60 percent going back to the company and 40 percent is just distributed among the employees in form of quarterly bonuses this is coming from Kotaku, by the way jason schreier doing his uh usual great work that he does and so yeah i mean basically they what this amounts to is that uh gearbox signed a deal with 2k that they have to make over a certain amount of money, uh, which is the entire game's budget was around $95 million plus all of the budget for the downloadable content, which makes it closer to $140 million in order for you to get the big bonuses that people are used to because, you know, when Borderlands 1 and 2, especially 2, uh, was huge, people made enough money to buy houses some of these regular workers. So it's not like they haven't uh, been there, but people were thinking we're getting six figures to bonuses in Borderlands 3, and now that's not happening at all because uh, this deal that was signed where they had to make a lot of money back, and it just became profitable, supposedly, but the bonuses are not going to be not going to be big. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's good for Gearbox, right? That after the disappointment that was Battleborn, they're able to bounce back with Borderlands 3. Well, uh, yeah, but they didn't bounce back hard enough, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it seems like... They, well, they kept trying to do like different things, like that Aliens game and then Battleborn, but it's like... Mm-hmm. You're, you're at the, you know... It seems like you're at the whims of like Randy Pitchford, and it's like, no one else wants these games. And those games sucked, and they didn't sell. So... Right. Well, but I mean, I mean, at least it, they know... But you do get tired of making Borderlands, Borderlands, Borderlands. So I can kind well, of... Well... I mean, sure, but other companies are... are uh, good enough to be able to develop a different game. Gearbox isn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they even tried doing their pre-sequel that didn't turn out as well. They didn't, They barely even did that, too, I think. Or, like, they had, like, some a lot of help with that one, I think. Yeah, 2K Australia did, like, most of that work, actually. I mean, the real yeah. problem is, like, well, there's also, like, a rumor that, like, he took, like, a $16 million bonus, like, a few years ago. Well, and then also the worst part of it is also the bonuses that did come were going to the company. So yeah. they're going to him and the executives, but not the 40% that's going to the employees. And then his yeah. whole... <clears throat> the worst part is the way he went about it, right? If you don't like this, you can walk. And it's like, really? Well, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. when everyone walks, it'll be the one developing the game itself. <laughs> well, like, okay, so I get it that they had to take it into a new studio, another studio in in Quebec, and you know, obviously, part of this is also you know, COVID nineteen, uh, playing into things and and whatever. But it's like, especially with what's going on right now, like, this is a stance you're gonna take. Like, oh, you don't like this? Just walk. Yeah. Really. Okay, like, but damn. I mean, well, they also say like there's some other gearbox. Like they open up like a second studio, mm-hmm. and I'm just thinking like, why? Like you guys can barely handle one studio. Like what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> what well, I'm guessing it's development on Borderlands with the DLC got so big that they 
you know, it eventually had to. Oh, uh, well, I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's the Quebec, uh, Quebec studio. But it's like, if, if you guys, like, I play Borderlands 3. It is not that much of a step up from Borderlands 2. Like, that's the, that's kind of the scary part. It's like, this game cost $95 million to make. Like, did you waste 85 of it? Like, fucking around and someone like, oh crap, we gotta make a game. Use the $10 million to, like for the rest of it? Like, what, what happened? Yeah, I mean, I just don't like the whole, we're paid less to begin with, and then, I, oh, hope to God you make a bonus. You I, know? I mean, you can I, you can, there are good and bad things to that type of plan. I mean, Jens kind of actually has that with his job. Like, he got, he got like, a big bonus, I think, last month. That was, like, huge, you know, it really helped him with his debt that he's been accruing over the past few months. Mm-hmm. It was, like, a, it was a performance bonus, basically. Right. Uh, so, I mean, that that's good, but his company, you know isn't run by a fuck up <laughs> or, you know, one run by one of the shadiest people around. I mean, if Randy said tomorrow or tonight, you know, tonight, Hey, you know, I did get that bonus six, you know, three, three years ago or whatever. Uh, I spent some of it, but here's like the rest of the, you know, here's $8 million of it for the employees or something, you know, here, but he, he's, he constantly seems like one of the sketchiest and like greediest people around. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was that whole thing we talked about last year with the... The lawsuit. Weird... Yeah, and the lawsuit yeah, uh, that eventually got dropped. I guess, Gear... yeah. I think, I guess uh, Gear... like one of the Gearbox co-founders died last week or two weeks ago or pretty pretty recently. Uh, he was like an artist or like a... I think a... Mm-hmm. I mean, even an artist or like a uh, designer or something like that. And... You know, Gearbox themselves wrote some, you know, some long post about it, but I, was, I read it, I'm just thinking, like, I bet Randy doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> no, I mean, he pretty much said it right there, so. He's probably, he's probably, he's probably like, glad the guy died, but one, how good one less bonus I have to fill. <laughs> and the, the sad part is, is, like, you know, Gearbox themselves, they're, like, divorced from him. They're a fine enough company. Like, they aren't the best, mm. but they're okay. But, you know, he's, a, he's like the one dragging that place down. And he has been since pretty much Borderlands 2. <laughs> right. So, I know they are, like, privately owned, so they can't get rid of him. But I think everyone else should leave and form their own company and make, make a, you know, Border World or War, World Border or something like that. Make the same damn game, but make it be good. <laughs> Well, there were plenty of people that did enjoy Borderlands Three enough. Um, yeah, they're wrong. It's just, I mean, like, I, as I was somebody who finished watching that Tiger King thing on Netflix. Yeah, this kind of has some of those vibes. Yeah, so I don't know. I if mean, you've also, seen I mean, at least like, I mean, they used to actually make games. Like they, have, like they're a pretty not great studio anymore. Yeah, like no. Oh, over over the past ten years, they've made, I don't know, like, I would say ten games, maybe like twelve, mm-hmm. but only like three of them have actually done well. And I think that's not a great batting average, guys. Come on. <laughs> nope, it's not. But it's like I think the only like positive games they've done since I'll, I'll go two thousand uh, two thousand nine. So like the first Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands 1, 2, and 3 did well, you know, well enough, and Homeworld Remastered Collection did good, uh, that was it. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, look how much they've had to port over Gearbox, or Borderlands to everything, just to... Yeah, but, I mean, that's the thing saving that company, but it's like, you can't rely on that thing forever, as Borderlands 3 just, you know, bluntly got just for that. <laughs> right. And, and also, I mean, if it just turned profitable, like, th- th- it's not going to be like a GTA 5 or a Rocket League, or, you know, uh, how long is this game going to be still selling? <laughs> yeah, it'll get to the point. 
But I mean, it's yeah. crazy to think you know, all these games that we say that we're like, ah, nobody will buy that. And then, oh, one of the biggest selling things. Oh, it showed up on the Switch, so now people are buying it again. Like, uh, it's probably be the same thing with Borderlands. For some reason, it'll get bought on the Switch, even the, as if they don't have it on any other, every other yeah. system that's there. Here, enjoy the worst playing version of this game. Have fun. Yeah, I know you might play better than the 360 or. No, they said whatever. it was going to be locked at 30 frames a second. So. Oh, nope. okay. Well, then, then probably not. <laughs> Well, speaking of one company to another company like support a lot of their games to various platforms, Bethesda, who are well known to do that. I mean, Skyrim's on freaking Alexa. Yeah. Uh, so Bethesda won't be having an E3 digital presentation this year because of the challenges the company's facing to the COVID-19. And basically the company's had to deal with, you know, working from home and it's not... Uh, not going that well with the huge projects they got. And I mean, that's the thing. I think people don't realize how much of a cooperative effort that game uh, development is just from, you know, reading books about it and hearing developers discuss it and seeing it be discussed constantly on Twitter all the time. Um, Uh, So, yeah. I mean, what they could do, this would be a good alternative is uh, they should just have web, like, Pete Hine should just turn on his webcam like randomly one day on Twitch and go, here's here's the Bethesda press conference. And he just has a folder on his desktop with a bunch of like game trailers in it. And he's just like, okay, here you go. And he just plays, plays all of them. And then yeah. he Skypes, he Skypes in Andrew WK and they have a three hour concert together. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be super Bethesda if they did. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I mean, I could have. Other companies have can, already canceled, so I mean, this was obvious. But also, I'm thinking like, what does Bethesda have to show? <laughs> you know, I mean, most of their games are huge, and they're not going to be done. And from, what are they going to show? Like another snippet of uh, some little snippet of Elder Scrolls or some snippet of Starfield? I mean, I think their well, biggest game that they had was what uh, the Tango GameWorks game that Ghostwire Tokyo. I was going to say it was probably going to be like that Fallout 76 garbage with that updated patch yeah. or whatever. The, well, the, NPC, our... the NPC DLC. <laughs> yeah. The, that. Uh, Arcane's also working on a game called Deathloop that yeah. we're supposed to see more of as well, which I think was the most interesting thing because we hadn't heard a lot about it. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's going to be... I guess upsetting for that E three time to come around and you won't uh get what you're used to. But I think this means more of, well, you're gonna see stuff about our games when they're ready. And yeah. not so much of, oh, we're gonna try to cram a lot of stuff in for a presentation that now doesn't have to have a date. So I wouldn't be surprised, like Mark just said, if outside of Nintendo who's really good about doing those if everybody else just kind of has that mindset and yeah, Microsoft will probably have something, but they don't I necessarily. Think, yeah. I think every company will have something. The, what the question is whether or not it'll be good or interesting. Like I just don't, you know, I don't want to have another Mark Cerny snooze a for an hour where he's talking about shaders or shit like that. <laughs> well, I mean, we know Nintendo, Ubisoft and Microsoft are planning something. Obviously COVID-19, uh, notwithstanding, because that's still a challenge you're having to deal with. Yeah. Um, so... I want I, for the, for the Mario thing. I want I want John Vignaki to be dressed as Mario and on an empty stage, just hosting, not 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 giving a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, his I mean... his wife looks a lot like Princess Peach, yeah. so he could get her in costume as well. <laughs> Hey, it, it could happen, just like you said. So I can I, I can dream. <laughs> uh, Mark hinted at it a while. Wait on that for a second, because it does kind of make sense to go from, you know, Bethesda saying they wouldn't be doing a digital presentation that would have been, you know, what they would have done at E3, to Gamescom basically saying, hey, we understand what's going on with, uh, you know, the the Corona crisis, as they call it. Um, but we're still planning on having Gamescom one way or another. 
uh, whether it's if an on-site event is possible in August, which who knows by then what's going to be happening. Uh, Germany has not, they have a lot of numbers of cases, but their healthcare system is uh, much Good. more robust. <laughs> and so they've been able to, it's, it's, to mitigate. It's fun- their healthcare system is functional. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. And also, yeah, it's just, they have, they've found different ways to, to mitigate like having their hospitals just absolutely be bum rushed. But I feel like they also were paying attention to the social distancing stuff more than, than what we're going through, per, you know, considering my state just now decided that they were going to have a total shutdown. And I still don't know how that's going to work for our state really, well, because well, hey, man, let's go to church. They'll solve it all for you. Uh, yeah, that's the thing that doesn't make any sense to me either. Like, why are we even having conversations about, oh, look, I get it. The power of prayer, all that stuff. I, as a person that used to be a youth uh, staff, youth minister for a long time, um, I get it. Like, you know, God works miracles, but like, God is, is not going to keep you from get going to church and all being together and infecting 20 people in the church. Like that's not going to not happen. So uh, you can, you can keep saying you want your church back, but sorry, you're still going to get uh infections. Uh, either way, uh, the point is that Gamescom is trying to evaluate whether or not they're going to have an onsite presence in Cologne or not, or if it's going to be all, digital where they'd have the opening night live and the gamescom now portal and all I, that stuff i could see them i mean i don't think they would do it i think it would be an interesting experience if they had like they actually had the event and they had booths set up but they only had like five or ten people going between different booths and like just talking like to the developer or just watching the trailer and then that's it like don't have a public you know show mm-hmm. i realize that's crazy but you know, it would keep the social distancing aspect in play, and you could still see, you could still get like the developer uh, insight, or you know, have them ask questions, and they could like heavily, tw- you know, twitchize it, and you know, have a Twitch audience asking questions or something stupid like that. Couldn't you do that digitally as well, though? I mean, I mean, yeah, but I don't think it would be quite as uh, like personable, or wouldn't oh, you know, would yeah. have that dynamic. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be as cool having the guys, having the developers sitting in their house over Skype or Zoom or whatever, and then having to talk to the developer that is uh, on the floor or also in their house or whatever, you know, it definitely wouldn't have a, a great feel to it, but we'll see. I think it will be enjoyable to at least have something i think it's it's sort of depressing when you go around and every time you go oh that's far enough out maybe that'll happen nope that got canceled too nope that got canceled too the olympics has now been postponed the euros has been postponed i mean it's like any big thing you were looking forward to this year is now like obsolete and to maybe perhaps at least have gamescom be able to go forward would be kind of nice yeah Something we also won't see till August is Wasteland 3 because Wasteland 3 has been delayed. Um, so this is another, you know, NXIles having to deal with, you know, working from home due to the coronavirus. And I was supposed to come out May 19th. It's now been delayed till the end of summer, which the extra three months will help them get uh, feedback from the beta, optimize, you know, polish, all those things. I think this is good. I think, you know... Um, safety of your studio and your people is a lot more important than oh, yeah. getting a game out right now. I mean, I, so. aside from like Final Fantasy 7, I think most games for the rest of this year are off the uh, timetable for the most part. I think this month is okay. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. It, I mean, yeah. games coming out like, you know, within the next month or two. But I mean, like Last of Us, for example, I mean, that might come out it's release date, but who knows? Or like Ghost of Tsushima or something like that. Yeah, I do wonder. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, this game was supposed to come out May nineteenth, and that's the middle of next month. 
Um, so, you know, I, I think there's, there's more things that, you know, obviously they're not going to give us the whole breakdown of, of exactly why. Um, but I do think, you know, again, like game development is a collaborative effort and sometimes there's some things you can't do while everybody's stuck in their house. So, you know, I, I think, uh, the stuff that's supposed to like trials of mana will be okay. That comes more towards the end of uh, predator. I think will will still come out. Uh, but I think after you get to that, I think you do have to start worrying about, like you said, is last of us going to get delayed? Yeah. Is, uh, some of these other big games, uh, coming down and is, uh, Iron Man going to get delayed again? You know, is, uh, so, yeah. Is the the Xenoblade Chronicles is that going to come out on May twenty ninth? You know, is is Minecraft Dungeons going to come out? Because Wasteland three is also a, a Microsoft thing. So, yeah. Is that wonderful one on one remaster that was also supposed to come out the same day going to come out? You know, so I I think that's one that will come out like a day and day or you know the day they said. Because it looked pretty far. I mean, looked far enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll see what what gets delayed and what what comes. But I I do think that we might see more of these. So don't oh, yeah. be too surprised. But it, I, it is upsetting. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the headline. Halo Infinite infinitely delayed. <laughs> uh, well, you know, so far. Uh, after hearing an interview with Phil Spencer today that, that uh, IGN did uh, for their Xbox podcast with Ryan McCaffrey, they always do great work over there as well, that um, right now they don't have a plan B. They haven't set that up, but they also want to make sure that they're not uh, putting their teams in jeopardy by trying to ramp it up or anything like that, so... I yeah. think everything's kind of staying the course and we'll know by the time we get to that press conference if things don't get you know even worse with this which they are we already know they are with uh, the the COVID-19 if it doesn't go r- ridiculous how much more things are going to get uh, impacted you know so right that's uh that's something and, and that's perhaps why Nintendo aside from it being 35th anniversary is kind of erring on that side of caution maybe and saying, you know what? Maybe we, well, this was already in the works with the, the Mario movie and, and all these other, the, the, the uh, universal studios thing, but uh, lots of rumors and reports from video game Chronicle, Euro gamer, venture beat, so many uh, different Kotaku that all kind of corroborated a big story about Nintendo is going to do go all out for Mario's 35th anniversary to celebrate, yes, the movie and the Universal Studios thing. And we're not going to just get, like, these are going to be much more than just ports. They're going to be remastered, very well done, like 35th anniversary Re-releases of at least Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy 1. Don't know if Galaxy 2 is going to be tied into that. And then a new Paper Mario game, which according to uh, Venture Beat is going to go back to the roots N64 GameCube era, which means it's more RPG, thank God, and less platforming. And Super Mario 3D World is going to get the deluxe treatment that the new Super Mario Brothers got, which is good because that game is really great and deserves more love. And yeah, I mean, I'm excited the most, I think, for Sunshine. To Maybe it, they get to fix that up a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, what are they going to do? Make it, yeah. make it good? <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, getting to play Galaxy again. Anything you're excited about? I mean, about? I would be, I want to play Super Mario 64 looking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that'll be nice. I don't like Sunshine at all. 
So <laughs> that's neither here nor there for me personally. Uh, but Galaxy 1 and 2 would be nice on the Switch. Yeah, 3D World is one that I liked for the little bit that I got to play. I wanted to play more, and now if it does get the deluxe treatment, I want to... You think that there's a chance that they would... I mean, I think it's already been confirmed that these are all going to get released separately. But do you think think... it's better to release it all in one big, like, Super Mario Bros. All-Stars 2? Or to, Uh, like, kind of space it out throughout the year and... I think it depends on how much each game is going to be. If it was like every game for $100, sure. But if it's like every game for... Oh, 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 I should say all the games for $100, then sure. But if it's every game like $30, then no. <laughs> well, I could see them definitely making 3D World $60. And the new Paper Mario will be $60. I could see them doing a package of Galaxy 1 and 2 for 60 and maybe they do Super Mario 64 and Sunshine for like 40 or something. I don't know. Yeah. Nintendo's not great about pricing things in a nice oh, way. No. I mean, they charge 60 bucks for that. I mean, yes, they merged two games into one, but they charge 60 bucks for that freaking um, Pokemon Rescue Team thing. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, also, Paper Mario is bad. <laughs> I don't want. If they were serious, I want a Mario RPG remake. Ah, I like the first couple <laughs> Come on. of Mario's. Come on, they're and, not and, terrible. None of those, none of those games compared to Mario RPG. Well, no, they don't, but they're not terrible. I mean, yeah, but by that point, like, I, what would you rather have? You know, coronavirus or you know the measles? Like, it's like. Well, the measles because that doesn't kill you know as much huh? as much as you know, the other one. Like, yeah. yeah, I like. I don't know. I guess I just have more fond memories of it than maybe it really is. Um, I haven't played Paper Mario in a while, so. Well, I know that series uh, also went off the rails at a certain point. I mean, I love those Mario and Luigi games, so I don't know if they can get something out of those, something similar to that. Then yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just I'm Mario's probably one of my top five favorite franchises ever. So getting more Mario is never going to be a complaint for me. Um, I'm excited for all of this. Yeah, just uh, want to see it actually get announced by Nintendo. And I mean, there's too much here for this not to be happening. I mean, these are the these are the like when you talk about like Eurogamer, Video Game Chronicle, Kotaku, Gematsu. Uh, Venture Beat reporting stuff. If you get all of these people reporting things, I mean, there's just too much smoke to the fire for this not to be true. Um, but still, you know, where is this getting made? <laughs> because, you know, with what's going on right now, um, you know, all, all in Japan, it's being hard hit as well. So, Yeah, but not as hard hit. Or, you know, they're doing yeah. things intelligently. So, I mean, I imagine people might still be going to work to just keeping you know, their distance or being, you know, being yeah. safe. As we talked about last time, they don't have the at home space and technology like we do to yeah. do all oh, this work just, from home stuff. Yeah. It's so. also just not in their mindset to, you know, yeah, be at home fucking around. <laughs> uh, and a nice thing Ubisoft's doing really quick before we get to the last kind of, I guess, major thing to talk about news wise uh, is, uh, Ubisoft is doing like a month of free games and like game trials uh, for, you know, with, with everybody staying home for the COVID-19, at least for another month in the United States and, you know, around the world. Uh, and even extreme cases like where Daniel lives in Virginia, where apparently everybody's staying at home until June 10th now. Uh, so uh, I, I don't want to get too up in arms about that because that might be the case for everybody if this keeps going the way it is. But uh, Rayman Legends is the first game. It's available right now. You can download it for free on PC through the Uplay. I mean, that's been available on almost everything at this point. It's a really great game, though. Yeah. Uh, so definitely should get uh, downloaded if you haven't. I definitely would recommend it. And apparently uh, Just Dance and Assassin's Creed will also... I wonder which Assassin's Creed it is because almost all of those have been part of 
uh, either gains for gold or PlayStation Plus at some point. I um, imagine it's the origin. I think. Probably. I I'm would think. Out of out of season a little too new, like that's the newest one yeah. actually. So, I think I like one before. And then uh, you'll always own it, by the way. Also, once you download it, so. Yeah. And then, you also get a trial of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which I don't know how much you want to really uh, play that, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Trials Rising is is pretty it's pretty good, and Ghost Recon Wildlands, which is you know worth it. At Crew Two. Uh, I don't know about that in the division. It's not worth well, it. So, yeah, well, well and so the division will just freak people out. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't want to play the division right now with the, what's going on. But yeah, it's and it's funny because apparently Resident Evil Three, like the first line in that in that game, has to do with the oh this pandemic happened or whatever. It's like oh whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, people will be getting to play that massively on Friday. So, uh, Nier, not to be outdone, the original Nier is getting a remake called Replicant version 1.22474487139. I'm not joking. Uh, it's only half as stupid as half the Final Fantasy number sequels. Well, not Final Fantasy, or the Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I know, like, Jens is the big uh, original Nier person, and I'm a Dragon Guard. I like Dragon Guard. I had to review Dragon Guard 3. Um, so, uh, you know, like, it's cool, because this is also, like, the version that, like, only only Japan got. So, it's neat that that's happening. What do you think uh, about it as a as a near automata fan and also the uh become as gods edition is hitting game pass today so if you haven't played near yet and you have game pass you can check that out too uh my my concern is like are is it just an hg upgrade or are they fixing the problems of near like i okay like, so I, I, I want platinum to be doing the combat system <laughs> So, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what is being changed as far as what's wrong. The replicant version featured a younger brother and his sister rather than a father and daughter, which is the main thing that's different here. And the remaster is going to be developed by Toy Logic and not Platinum. So there's there's that already. Yeah. Uh, so mm, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not... I know Young's will get it. I'll be curious about the review scores. I think Near Automata, I mean, that blew up so big mm -hmm. in having this game that probably won't have a lot in common with that other one, except for maybe some of the design of the characters. I think that will really throw people off and get them annoyed. <laughs> well, there's people already complaining that you're not, you don't have the character designs that you do in Automata, especially with the, you know, 2B and everything. I mean, yeah, but so, it's also a different game. Right. The game is supposed to be like hundreds or thousands of years in the past or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I just don't think like the gameplay is going to hold up its end of the bargain. Because I, I remember that was one of the critis criticisms of the first one. And it's like, all right, well, hopefully this one's fixed, but probably not. <laughs> Well, and also announced was a near reincarnation, which is a phone mobile game. Uh, so that's what everyone wants. Yeah, I mean, I guess Square has so many mobile games based on their other properties. I guess why not? Uh, it's going to be free to play, very much similar to their other, like Brave Exvius and all that stuff. Uh, that's still doing well. It just had a Full Metal Alchemist uh, tie-in. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess why not? You know? Yeah. I, I don't know, uh, what else? <laughs> what else, uh, you do there? Um, so, I guess it's a main topic, since, uh, Resident Evil 3 is about to come out. I guess we'll talk about our favorite, or, you know, the best, uh, survival horror games. 
for you. Um, one of my favorites that I spent a lot of time with, uh, especially because the story is so weird and just I love the way they they did it was Alan Wake and obviously the the DLC that comes with it as well. Just um, I love that <clears throat> story of Alan Wake and also just I enjoy the gameplay. I think it got better with the DLC where you felt more a bit more actiony, but yeah, it's just, I thought it was really well done and, you know, obviously Remedy kind of played off that later with Control as well, so. Yep. Uh, I said, I mean, I have, a, I have a small list, but one of mine would be like Bioshock 1. I think oh, yeah. Bioshock 2 is a better game, but I think Bioshock 1 set a really great atmosphere and like a really great setup for a story. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, just going, to, like seeing those first moments of Rapture, like going yeah. underneath and everything and being like, wow, that's not something I would think I would ever see in a video game. Like that's, that's amazing. It's set, I think a different bar for what you could do with games. Yeah. Um, so long as you had the right graphics card. When I first played that well, game, I'm yeah. like a really old laptop. I was missing like the shader model, correct shader model. So it, like the water was all black. Oh, uh, wow. This looks fucked up. <laughs> like what happened? You know, what's going on? <laughs> Well, um, I mean, there's obviously the uh, Resident Evil 2 from last year. Which, well, I mean, yeah, most Resident Evils could fit the bill. I mean, Resident Evil 2 yeah. is probably the best one currently. Or maybe 3, who knows. Uh, but, yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, I wouldn't say like Resident Evil 6. You can, like, well, no. no. I mean, like but four that's or not five really survival six. horror either. Yeah. You know? I, well, at least 4 you straddles the line, but like 5 and 6 are like just action games. Yeah. I mean, at least I've been... two oh, is, you know, it, like I mean, that's the thing though. Is like now, Final Fantasy VII is raising the bar on another level, right? But RE2 kind of showed you like, oh, this is what a remake should Could be. be. Yeah, yeah like, you know, and, and now everybody else has to kind of aspire to that. So, all the best hits from the late nineteen nineties, right? And, you know, I know you like the Lawn Dark a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a cool game. You know, stuck in the Canadian wilderness trying to survive. It has some funky gameplay mechanics, but I really like the idea of it. And at least there's something to do, unlike Disaster Report 4. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes back to that. Uh, Dead Space is another one of my favorite ones. Uh, just... Oh my god, some of the times you walk around in that game is absolutely, like, especially, uh, two, it can get, like, terrifying. Like, holy crap, I'm walking around and not expect that thing right there. Um, just, yeah, I, I just hate that they ruined it with three, but the first two are definitely, uh, worth, worth checking out. And Fatal Frame as well is probably one of my favorites just from the sheer like what the fuck am I looking at <laughs> you know like some parts of that game is just like alright Japanese horror I got it yeah but they, they do it right though they do it right you know I would say like uh, Dying Light would be a good, good one mm -hmm. like Dead Island might have been but it fell apart near the end or yeah. fell apart like halfway through so no but Dying Light holds it together better at least or like State of Decay that's a decent one. Well, Last of Us, of course, as well. I mean, how can you not talk about Last of Us with with two uh, looming ominously there? And yeah. Just, I mean, it being one of the the great games of all time, even if uh, even if Mark doesn't. I think it's it. fine. I mean, no, yeah. Randy thinks I was a vendetta against it, but it's like I think it's fine. I mean, I played it twice, so. Yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah. Uh, there's a game. I mean, a few other games you never heard of. Called, one is called The Void. It's an old Steam game. that's pretty neat. Like you're like adding color back to the world, but it looks very weird. <laughs> uh, and a game called uh, Pamela. It's all an acronym. Mm. I don't know what it stands for, but it's basically like sci-fi, or you know, it's like a first-person type of it's a uh, little like Dead Space 
or you know sci-fi horror but you can like build shit as well <laughs> but I think I think it's in early access or it's been in there forever <laughs> well and then Silent Hill as well it's... no we're looking for good games hey <laughs> I, I I just remember really not liking uh, Silent Hill 4 well yeah I mean, eventually, once it got to... It's like Resident Evil. It got to a certain point where, you know, they redeemed it with Resident Evil 7, but they they got to a certain point where, like you said, 5 and 6 just absolutely took it. Well, to... so, Silent Hill 4 had these, like, weird first-person sequences in, like, the, your apartment, and I remember that making me feel, like, super nauseous. Yeah. And I was like, I'm done playing this game. I don't want to throw up. <laughs> well, and also for me, I... I uh, remember um, enjoying like Condemned Criminal Origins when that came yeah. out. That was that's cool. Or like Fear, but that's there. not survival yeah. horror. That's just like a shooter mm-hmm. with like ghost crap in it. Scary, yeah, scary crap in it. Yeah. Very well done. And PT. For not the, a game. Not not a game, but it's a good demo. It's freaky. Yeah. I mean, I'd say, like, Until Dawn also would fit that bill. Yeah. The the characters get annoying after a while, but... Yeah. Yep. That's, like, every good horror film. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just... They play out those stereotypes to a T very well, so... <laughs> There's that, at least. So... But... Well, hey, you know, next time we are talking to you the embargo for Final Fantasy 7 remake will be lifted when the show comes out and people will be either really loving it or probably finding things to not like about it just like Resident Evil 3 will be interesting to see if you get more of uh, the higher scores or you get more of the, the like anomalies like well, it'll, yeah. it'll be curious, like, the bigger sites, I want someone who, you know, who loves Final Fantasy VII to play it, and then I want someone who's never played Final Fantasy VII before in his life to play it. Yeah, and, I like, want to see, see that they, as well. You know, see what they think. I'm still waiting to hear from somebody to at least give a little bit of an indication of how big is the game, actually, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I did like uh, watching that inside the story three that they took the care to make sure that they added in the mini games and uh, talking about the combat system and, and how they wanted to tie that in and adding all those things and making sure that uh, apparently materia plays an even bigger part in this game and being able to change your weapons and everything. It'll take you 10 minutes of an unskippable cutscene to summon the Knights of the round table. <laughs> That's something that they they wanted to make sure that they uh, didn't have you spend a lot of time on either. They said that they they realized that that took too long. So. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you do it four times in a row, you can just put it down and make yourself some sandwiches. <laughs> yep, basically, might as well. It takes forever. But all right, uh, you know, if you enjoy what you heard here, you know, you can always hit subscribe. And you'll know when we release a show. And maybe for something like Final Fantasy VII, uh, since, you know, if all three of us are going to be playing it with the ends included and perhaps Randy as well, four of us, we can do a little bit of a spoiler cast or something. A little bit extra thing there. Um, So that'll be something coming down. But until Monday morning... We'll see you later, everybody. Later. Peace.